bottom line. Welcome, everybody. Listen, we are going to go fast and hard because we have a border crisis. I don't know if you've lived under a rock, maybe, I don't know, but we do have a border crisis. I'm going to cut to the chase. You've seen a lot of our content from the border. When we showed you stash houses, you know, we'll insert some of this. Remember, just to remind you, hundreds of thousands of pieces of clothing discarded, IDs discarded. We've interviewed cartel members. A lot of that content will come out in our new documentary, Remember America, that's coming out. Uh, we're working on it. But today I want to talk about something specific, Title 42. And what does that mean? And why is that important? And why is it that we wrote an op-ed disclosing the truth and no media source will run it? Because I truly and firmly believe in fighting human trafficking. You have to go after the root of the problem. And the root of why there is a migration crisis may just surprise you. Yes, it's about money. Sure. Cartels making millions, 90 million a day on average. Yes, we have 700,000 people amassed in Mexico that will, will cross between tonight and Sunday. Yes, we are seeing 27,000 in custody in, uh, across the border at the moment. Yes, we're seeing 5,000 gotaways a day. Yes, we're seeing women and children uh, um, savagely abused and raped in transit to the border. Are you aware that 60% of the children approaching the border prior to arriving to the border are sexually abused? This is before they get to America. Why? Because it's an incredible uh, tactic by the cartel to sexually abuse them, silence them, and they will never say a word in America. They are preparing them for what is to come. Are you aware that on average it's $8,500 per person owed to the cartel? To cross the border, are you aware that they charge them $4,500 to get them to the border? Then they hold them on this side, on that side of the river. They show them America, the evil, and say, that's the promised land. If you want to cross, you owe us another $4,000. Are you aware that in that process, the migrant, and we have ledgers of, of cartel keeping score, keeping record, ledger, uh, in accounting on who owes what, how many children per day, do you know that the ledger slow, show that the, the migrant at that point may have paid off a debt of $8,500 by paying $30 because it's all they had in their pocket of an $8,500 debt? Are you aware that the cartel charges interest, 30% compounding interest per month on the $8,500 debt? Are you aware that human trafficking has multiple forms? Debt trafficking, labor trafficking, and sexual exploitation. All three are being used to pay off what? The debt. Is Joe Biden and his administration telling you that you have children age 10 working in meatpacking plants in America, in McDonald's in America? Are they telling you that the slave trade of children in America is through the roof? Why? They have to pay off a debt. Are they telling you that the cartel runs both sides of the border? Are they telling you that the cartel has a network deep into America, actually all the way to Canada? Are they telling you that the cartel is hiring American-born children, boys, aged 16 through 18, to be runners, to literally have a, a, a pin drop like an Uber and say, show up at this place, pick up the four people that's going to come out of the brush in the bush and take them from point A to point B. We pay you 500 bucks. Are you aware that American teenage boys now are complicit in human smuggling? Who's talking about this? Who's telling you about this? Are you aware that the FBI is instructing sheriffs in Texas to let cart known cartel members go when they apprehend them because at the border they have a future court date. J January 14, 2024, they must appear in court. And then we have routine traffic stops two weeks ago of a sheriff in Texas pulling over a vehicle with a known cartel member in the driver's seat, a Russian in the passenger seat, three Romanians in the back seat, a one-month-old and a five-year-old child, and they had to let the cartel member, and the kids go. Why? Because the instruction is 
We have apprehended him at the border. He has a future court date. Are you aware that if the sheriff was to keep those children, they have nowhere to take them? I mean, how much do you want me to tell you? Do you want you really want to know the truth of how you've been lied to? You've absolutely been coerced into this false love movement, this false humanitarian virtue signal movement where all the activism is virtual. It's online. It's on likes and tweets and retweets and reposts. But none of it is actually about getting hands dirty, actually rescuing children. Are you aware that now we can't even process We went from a a nation with laws, a nation with a border, a nation with immigration law that's still on the books, a nation where when you enter illegally, you go in front of an immigration, immigration judge. The judge gives you an option. It's called voluntary departure or, or departure by, by court order. If you choose voluntary departure within 48 hours, you're out of the country. You go back to where you came from without a long-term penalty on your record. If you do not, if you avoid law enforcement and ICE, you remember that organization, ICE? Do you remember the word deportation, which is now a curse word? ICE would then knock on your door unannounced, pick you up and deport you. You would then have a five to 10 year ban from re-entering America. Well, that's not happening. Are you aware that the Biden administration got rid of federal judges, immigration judges? Are you aware that ICE has been put on the sideline? Are you aware that we don't deport anybody? Anybody. All are welcome. We're aiding and abetting them. Are you aware that in the process from 2020 until now, we went from a legal immigration system to aiding and abetting, moving people through border border patrol into NGOs where they get a meal, clothing, a blanket, shoes, a phone, a plane ticket, a bus ticket. Remember when we were seeing planes taking off from Laughlin Airport, unmarked commercial airliners flying from a an Air Force base with children? Do you remember Ron DeSantis saying, hey, they just showed up and dropped children in the middle of the night in Florida? Do you remember Greg Abbott putting him on buses and shipping him up to Martha's Vineyard? Well, that's gone. That's in the past. Now, they're not even being bussed anymore. They're not even being flown by plane anymore. And we'll show you the footage. Now they just released into the United States. No longer tonight, when a migrant comes across, do they go to a shelter, which is an NGO, which normally was Catholic Charities, Who received a check from the government? Are you aware that there's also Catholic Relief Mission in South America that's coercing the people to come because they get a check from the government? No, I'm not saying everybody who is of the Catholic religion is doing this, but you need to look into your leadership. Are you aware that that the Red Cross is getting a check from the government? Every one of them have a Red Cross blanket. Our NGOs were paid... When humans were smuggled, now they're not even going to the NGOs anymore. Why not? We're over capacity. Got a text yesterday from a sector leader at Border Patrol who said, we are 150% over capacity in every sector on the U.S.-Mexico border. Uh, Can I remind you that's 1,900 miles of border. 1,254 of those miles, Texas, baby. 150% over capacity. So what's the net result, Yaku? It means they no longer even go into a shelter where they get a meal, food, a bus ticket, a plane ticket. Well, well, what happens now? They cross the border. They get apprehended. uh, Secretary Mallorca's term. Please give us a definition of apprehended, Mr. Mallorca. You who lie to the Senate. You who lie under oath, who says we have a closed border. Oh, you border czar, uh, Miss Vice President Kamala Harris, who won't actually go to the border, but stop 40 miles short to do a press conference. Why don't you tell America how children are being abused? 
oh, why don't you, Mr. President, tell America that they no longer go into the NGO and get a meal. They now go through Border Patrol and are released into society. Welcome. There you go. Not 50. Let's try 6,500 yesterday in one location. Let's try 27,000 being held and, and seeping into the system. Where's the, human, you, where's the humanity now? Where's your love now on the left? Come on, Hollywood. Come on. Are you picking some of these people up, taking them into one of your four mansions? Are you feeding them a meal? Because the, the NGOs can't anymore. There's just too many. Now, here's what's happening. Tonight, you're going to see an influx because Title 42 is over. And the first two days, it's euphoric because they're coming in. Yay, we made it to America. Well, let me give you a news flash. Why don't you look at this map of Texas? When you enter McAllen, Texas, Brownsville, Texas, where the Asian influx is out of control, nobody speaks Mandarin. Nobody can ask them, where are you from? Where are you going? Why don't you look at this map for a second? Take this in. Because Texas is the size of some countries. When you enter Brownsville, Texas, McAllen, Texas, when you enter that place, you're 500 miles from the civilization that you think America is as a migrant. Because they see New York City in their mind. They see uh, San Antonio. They see Austin. They see sky rises and food and opulence. They see mansions in their mind. Um, excuse me. You cross McAllen, Texas and Brownsville, you're in the desert. You cross El Paso, you're in the desert. You're in a city that's been pummeled, been run down, been extorted and exploited, where the cartel runs up and down. You're in a city with low resources at best. You're in a city where almost every hotel room is occupied by our armed forces. You're 500 miles from the America you thought. And guess what? You got to make it on foot with children. When, by the way, on average, you've been traveling three months on foot to get to the border. And now there's no NGO to give you a meal. There's no cell phone. There's no pair of Reebok sneakers. There's no track suit. There's not even a Red Cross blanket. Why? Too many. It's just welcome in you go. So all of a sudden, thank you, Mr. Joe Biden. And yes, this is the longest monologue you've ever heard in your life because it's the truth. Thank you, Mr. Biden. You've now created the largest homeless class in modern day history because they're all homeless on the streets of El Paso, Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Brownsville, McAllen, Laredo, Hutspeth County in the middle of nowhere, where you don't even know where that is, and they're literally in the desert. We just, we just hit 75, 80 degrees here. Before you blink, it's going to be 104 in McAllen. They're in the desert. There's no water. There's no food. The stores are empty. They're sleeping in the sewer. You want to look at El Paso Street this week? People are laying on top of each other. It's looking like Africa. So, so where's the love is love movement now? All of a sudden, how humane is this now? And, and let's talk about adults for a second. Three days without food. What do you think is going to happen? Hmm? Maybe a little bit of looting? Maybe some theft? Can you blame them? They're hungry. Who are they stealing from? Americans. Breaking the law. You made them break the law. By, by making them coming into a country illegally that does not have the resources. Oh, but we sent $100 billion to the Ukraine. Oh, yeah. A good luck, Texas rancher. What do you think is going to happen on the Texas ranch, uh, ranches in, in, in Maverick County? Sheriff Coe. You want to call him and ask him how they're buckling up because 3 o'clock in the morning, four or 500 migrants are going to knock on the door of a 75, 80-year-old rancher and say, feed us or else. Hmm? You want to be that rancher? You want to get that knock on your door of your 10,000-acre ranch where you're alone in the dark night 
with nobody to help you. Well, well, surely Border Patrol will help him. Uh, No, they will not. Undermanned, understaffed. You want to call the sheriff and ask him how a sheriff patrols 1,400 square miles and he's got five deputies? You've been lied to. You've been coerced to have a bleeding heart to feel for the migrant, which you should. We should be the Good Samaritan. But look at the story of the Good Samaritan. Can you please? Will we please? I don't know. Maybe, Rebecca, you can pull up the Good Samaritan for me. I want to I want to pause here. I'm not yelling at you. I'm telling you, we are being made complicit to the greatest humanitarian disaster of our lifetime, the greatest human trafficking, sexual exploitation epidemic of our lifetime, recorded history, maybe only the Israelites in Egypt. I don't know. But let, let's look at the Good Samaritan a little bit. Who is my neighbor? That's everybody. Verse 29. Then Jesus answered and said, verse 30, story of the Good Samaritan. A certain man went down to Jerusalem, to Jericho, and fell among thieves. You think that's going to happen tonight? Fall among thieves, right? Who stripped him of his clothing. That's happening as we speak. Wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Do you know that we have reports of people killing each other in the camps in Mexico in waiting to come? Raping children in Mexico. Uh, Excuse me, Mexican president. You, sir, are a coward. You, sir, are looking the other way when human life is lost in your country. You, sir, are one of the worst of the worst because you're allowing your own people to be ravished, exploited. You, sir are complicit because you opened your southern border. You, sir, are not holding South America accountable to take care of their children. So you and your buddies in Davos, you and your buddies at the United Nations, you and your buddies at BRICS, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, I'm sad to say, my former country, the BRICS coalition that you, sir, now want to join with your Chinese buddies, you guys have weakened America. You partner with Joe Biden. You partner with Davos. You partner with the World Economic Forum. This is a global play. I'm going to prove it to you. Let's continue the Good Samaritan story. But a certain Samaritan, verse 33, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Yes, we must have compassion, but I'm going to show you how they played your compassion like a dime store fiddle. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine on it. Now remember, the good Samaritan did not hurt the man, did not tell him to come, did not coerce him to come, did not make him promises. That's the difference between the U.S. government, not the good Samaritan, and what's happening in this story in the Bible. The good Samaritan cleaned up someone else's mess, which now the American people are going to have to clean up your mess Mr. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Mayorkas, this administration, the American citizens going to have to clean up your mess and be the Good Samaritan because you coerced them to come. The Good Samaritan did, did not tell that man to come, did not strip him from anything, just bandaged his wounds. Let's continue. And when he saw he had compassion, so he went to him, bandaged his wounds, pouring oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, That means, again, your own dollar. The government's not going to fix this thing. Sorry, Greg Abbott's not going to fix this thing. It's bigger than them. Brought him to an inn. Pause the story. Pause the story. The Good Samaritan took the man to a place that could help him. Paid for him at that place. What place? Show me the place. Please show me the place now in America where we can round up half a million migrants that's going to cross in the next four days. And please tell me where we're going to take them. Because let me give you a piece of truth. If we we rescue a 13-year-old American citizen, a girl, that is a victim of sex trafficking tonight, we don't have a place to take her. 
It doesn't exist. Are you aware that we're shipping Texas girls that are safe from sex trafficking to Pearl Haven, Jessica Munoz facility in Hawaii? We have no place for them in Texas. American-born children rescued from sex trafficking have no place that we can take them as a good Samaritan. We are now in the place, in the situation, we, we are tapped out because of the sheer volume of victims that this government has created. We have nowhere to take them. They're going to sleep on the street. They're going to be homeless. They're going to be hungry. They're going to attack each other. They're going to have to steal to eat. What else would we expect of them? But then, why did they come? I wonder why. Why did they come? So that story about the Good Samaritan, nobody wants to talk about. He took him to an inn. He took them to a place of refuge. Not to his own home, because that won't work. To a place where he can be cared for, taken care of. Where? Where? Tell me, please. Don't have place for American children. Uh, we don't have place for children in foster care. They call it CWAP, Child Without Placement. Do you know that kids in CPS sleep on the floor, on linoleum and concrete floors of CPS facilities in this country? American-born children. What about the 150,000 kids that are going to cross the border in the next five days that will have to pay their debt? that will live on the street, that will not be able to eat, they will be in forced labor, forced sex trafficking, debt bondage, they will never get out of debt. Because there's a 30% interest on them monthly. Who did that? We're going to have a real conversation. Who made this happen? Two groups of people. The federal government of the United States and all their cronies, the left, the, the, the ones who have diabolical thinking, who want a virtue signal to the world that they care, yet they care nothing about what a migrant has to go through coming from Guatemala all the way to our border by foot. They don't care about the interviews we conducted of a mom saying she had to sell her own body so they would not touch her daughter. They don't care about the people who are giving bondage and slavery, slavery, slavery for the rest of their lives because they'll never be able to settle the debt like in Pakistan or India because your rate of pay can't keep up with your rate of interest. Have you heard Joe Biden mention that? No, the government and all who think like they think. American citizens, you made this happen. You did this. You coerced people. You lied to them, Mr. President, to say, come, we can take care of you. A hot meal, the American way, the American lifestyle. There's a reason we have an immigration system. There's a reason why there are visa quotas. I wonder why. They can only issue so many green cards a year, so many H1, B1, so many O1, J1, K1, F student visas per year. It's based on what the system can tolerate. It's based on what the system can support so that you don't take a person from a bad situation where they are and put them in a worse situation in the land of milk and honey. Because do you know what that breeds? Resentment. Hatred. Oh, Yaku, how do you know? Um, I'm from South Africa. South Africa has no borders. We have an influx of radical Islam, jihadist, radical, you know, sects from Central Africa migrate and infiltrate South Africa to the point of South Africa is now 4.8% of its population is illegal immigrants who do not want to assimilate. Another curse word. Have you heard Joe Biden talk about um, we're encouraging these people to become Americans. 
We're encouraging these people to teach them the way in the value system of America, our constitution, one nation under God, liberty and justice for all, rule of law. Treat your neighbor as you want to be treated. Law-abiding citizens, tax-paying citizens. Who's making any of those requirements of any of the migrants? Because there are no requirements. When I came in, I don't know if you can pull this up. Can you pull up the requirements to become a citizen of the United States, of America? And please say 2023. I want to show you how your president is violating the law. What he does is criminal. What the Senate is doing is criminal. Criminal. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi, that whole squad, they're breaking the law. Who is el eligible to become a citizen? You must be 18 years of age and older. You must have authorization. Uh-oh. Now we got a problem. You must have authorization to live and work in the U.S. on a permanent basis, informally known as a green card. Uh-oh, wait a second. Uh, you don't come in on a green card. You come in on a visa. On average, the time from when you have your visa to applying for, for a green card is three years. Four years to get the green card. You're seven years in before you get your green card. I was 10 years in before I got to hear these words. Welcome, new citizen of the United States of America, from a judge, after I passed test, after I was vetted up and down the wazoo. Let's continue. For at least five years, this is the law. You must have a green card or three years if married to a United States citizen. You can't get citizenship until you've had a green card for five years. You can't get your green card for about four years when you apply after you enter this country legally on a visa. How many laws are being violated? All of them. All of them. Let's continue. You must have continuous residence in the U.S. for at least five years or three years of marriage and physically be present in the U.S. You must be able to, uh-oh, wait, halt the bus, stop the train, we got a problem. Just hold up one minute. Because when I'm at the border and we are talking to the migrants, we need interpreters. So, so wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You must be able to read and write and speak basic English. I wonder where the word Spanish is over there. That's right, it's not there. Because the base language of America is English. I, I love Spanish, but it's not the base language. It's not the required language to be a citizen. You have to pass a written and verbal English test. You must have a knowledge and understanding of the fundamentals of U.S. history and government. You must be a person of good and moral character. Uh-oh, MS-13. Saniola Cartel. You must take a loyalty oath to the United States and support the Constitution and form of government of the United States. You must also swear to bear arms, if need be, against terrorism, foreign and domestic. Is anybody asking anybody who's coming in at the moment to even consider whether they want to be an American or not? They're not. It's called assimilation. It is simply not happening. What about the health condition? Because by law, when an immigrant, a legal immigrant, or someone who has been granted asylum in their home country where you apply for asylum at a U.S. embassy and you're granted asylum, so you come in legally. Do you know what needs to happen on the border, what the law says? They have to be spending time with health and human services. Health and human services should inspect and investigate the health condition of the migrant, the immigrant. Should have time with them to ask them any disease, uh, 
Are you vaccinated? Are you not? You know, um, now post COVID, who knows? They're coming in from Nigeria. Hello, Ebola. Hello, West Nile virus. Hello, hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Hello, cholera. What about all the Chinese flooding in today? They only speak Mandarin in Brownsville. Yes, Chinese. Our, Our CBP, Border Patrol, don't even speak Mandarin. They can't even question them. How about uh, it's China that's manufacturing all the fentanyl that's flooding into our country, that's killing 300 Americans a day, per day. Let's discuss that. Who, where's the valve? Where's the system to even vet? It doesn't exist. And they become homeless. And they're despondent because it's not what they were promised. Day three, day four, day five, when they get hungry, we're going to see anarchy. This is on the hands of anybody and everybody that believe borders are bad. It's not about having a border for the sake of keeping people out. It's having a border to have a system to allow the right people in. I'm not a hypocrite. I'm an immigrant. I am so grateful that I have the honor to call myself an American citizen. And I, and I live red, white, and blue. And I sing that anthem with the greatest pride. And I will defend this nation and save its children and contribute to this nation and help my neighbor. And did I say contribute? But now what? They're here. Now the Good Samaritan has to step in. So let's step in, Good Samaritan. Come on, church. But where do we take them? That's right. We don't have the resources. But we're sending money to the Ukraine. Oh, Jakob, but are you saying we should not help the Ukraine? I'm not saying that. It's the most philanthropic, most giving nation on earth, and we're called to be that by God. But um, should we not also help our own children? Should we not also evangelize America? Not even the migrant. Let's talk about the homelessness in America. Are you aware that Gavin Newsom in California are literally shipping homeless to Seattle? Why? To clean their own streets. They've got a a bargain, an agreement with Washington State. You take them. Uh, is that good Samaritan? Come on. Make your argument for how it is humane to coerce people, lie to them, say we can help you, we can have a life. Or do you want to talk to the lawyer from Cuba we talked to that has never been homeless in her life, who's now here living on the streets of El Paso, homeless, because she was told she'd be able to practice law. And now she knows, oh, not only can you not practice law, you got to go through school again, pass the bar, and you'll only be able to practice law in the state where you made the bar because it's state by state. And oh, by the way, it cost you a quarter million dollars. No biggie. And oh, by the way, you won't be able to get student debt. You think anybody told her that? You think anybody told the migrant that if you work illegally in this country, you are arrested? And those who employ you will be arrested. No. No. Nobody's telling them this. But now, if they hear it today, they've journeyed. They've abandoned their homes. They've journeyed. They've endured hell on earth. My heart breaks for every migrant That's coming for the right reason because some are coming for the right reason. Some are escaping tyranny. Some are escaping abuse. Some do have a vision to actually become Americans. Maybe not. They just want a better opportunity. My heart breaks for them because the evil contingent are exploiting them and we're allowing it. Are you aware that the Mexican National Guard are holding migrants hostage? making them pay. We have it on record in testimony. Are you aware that Mexican special forces killed Mexican guard members in a raid 
because they were holding people hostage with the cartel. No, nobody's telling you this. Are you aware that there's a war on the southern border between cartels because they're fighting over territory to smuggle and traffic human beings? Well, who did this? I told you two teams, two groups, the government and all that are in agreement with government. And the second group, this one's going to sting. Why don't you take a little bit of salt in a wound for a second? We did. We did it. The American people. You know why? We create demand for the sexual exploitation of human beings and children. And we create demand for counterfeit illicit drugs. We did it. It's fun to blame Joe Biden, right? He's to blame. He will answer. But that's one side of the equation. If you, we, the American people, stop buying sex with children, guess what? The cartel won't bring sex with children. If the American people tomorrow told the cartel, we need washing machines, we'll pay top dollar, guess what they will smuggle in? Washing machines. They don't care. It's a commodity. They'll sell washing machines, children, babies, blood, organs. What you buying? I, I got thingamabobs and galore. Let me open my trench coat for you and show you what I'll sell you. Exactly what you asked me for. Who's having that conversation, America? Oh, is your pastor talking about that? Is your politician talking about that? Is the conservative Republican Party talking about that? Is CPAC talking about that? No, they're not. Why? Because it means they need to stand accountable to stop demanding sexual exploitation of human beings. Or can I remind you that America is the number one nation on earth buying sex? period. America is the number one nation on earth buying sex from children, period. America is the number one nation on earth watching Pornhub and porn, period. America has the number one generation producing porn on themselves called Gen Z, period. What do you think the cartel is going to sell us? And oh, could you be so delusional that you think the cartel is bringing children into this country and selling them to the cartel? They're selling the children that they bring in to American sex buyers. Swallow that pill. Call it whatever you want. Red pill, truth pill. Swallow that pill. Fix that problem. Stop demanding for children to be raped. And maybe someone will stop bringing a child to be raped. But, oh, wait a minute. We're not just talking about the border here, are we? No, we're talking about America sexually exploiting American children. 79,000 kids in Texas in the system of being sexually exploited as we speak. Half a million in America. A $150 billion industry with a third of it spent in America. We create the demand. And we're normalizing pornography. Is it really so bad? It is the worst. It's the worst drug on the face of the earth. It's destroying you. It's destroying your family. And you are complicit in demanding sexually exploitive content. Which means you're asking somebody to exploit somebody else for your sexual pleasure. Oh, I'm watching it. Nobody's getting hurt. Really? Did you ask the actress at Take 57... If she's enjoying it, if there's drugs involved, if she's a sex traffic victim that didn't make enough money on the streets so and now she's forced to make porn, are you aware that 87% of all prostitutes in America have filed lawsuits against rape and trafficking? Oh, but a prostitute can't be raped. Of course she can. All she needs to say is no. One time.
Where do you want me to go? You want me to go deep? Yeah. You'll vomit if I tell you the truth. All the truth. Can we, can we pull a little movie magic here? You can't handle the truth. Your mind will explode. If you understand how corrupt we have become as a culture. How by the grace of God and the blood, the blood of Jesus Christ alone, are we still alive? But it's a game. Let's blame the left. Let's blame the right. Let's like a tweet. Let's repost. Oh, it took a horrible, the cartel, the cartel. Stop demanding sex with children. You don't need to like me, man. Let me tell you something. You need the truth. You need the truth. It will set you free. It's biblical. We are living in more biblical times than you can imagine. Read Revelation. They will call good evil and evil good. Are are they not calling objectifying women good? Are they not calling permanently eliminating the womb good? Are they not calling sex with children good? Are they not lowering the age of consent? Are they not kicking bills to protect children from sexual exploitation out of the House and the Senate in Texas? It's a despicable act, Texas legislature. Are they not lowering the age of consent? Are they not saying man-boy love is an association that should be appreciated? Are they not saying it's not a pedophile but a minor attracted person? Oh, don't tune out. Don't be complicit. No. This is the hour where you get to decide what side of the fence you're going to be on. Not your political fence. Do you actually understand that we're here to help people be redeemed and set free by the grace and the goodness of God, the mercy, the forgiveness, the redemption of the blood of Jesus Christ? Are we actually going to care about people by telling them the truth? Are we actually going to tell them, do not come? Do not come. The cartel is going to rape you, plunder you, put you in slavery and bondage. Do not come. Are we actually going to tell those presidents in those countries, step up or step out? You're accountable to take care of your nation's children and people. Sure, we can help you. Sure, we can help with diplomatic pressure. Sure, we can even send money. But you can't just send them here. Let me tell you a quick story. A man named Brian, who's a champion, a law enforcement official who travels with us. I I celebrate you, brother. Goes with me into Piedras Negras. We cross over into Mexico. We're walking the streets. Brian says to me, Yaku, what's missing? I look at the streets. I said, Brian, a lot, but what are you talking about? We dive into a store. True Mexican food, not Tex-Mex. They don't sell burritos in this shop. I don't speak Spanish. The owner doesn't speak English. Brian interprets for us, and I ask him. Brian says, Yaku, where's the homeless? No homeless to be found in all of Piedras Negras. Streets are clean. The man smiles. He goes, all our homeless cross the border. We send all our homeless into America. We don't have a welfare system. You do. I mean, nobody's going to hold the Mexican government responsible to not be corrupt, to not let the cartel run the border. To not let their politicians take money from the cartel? I thought we don't negotiate with terrorists. I thought America doesn't leave a man behind. I thought America is liberty and justice for all. I thought America holds a different set of ideals. I thought America is the light and the lamp on the hill. I thought America is the lighthouse so people don't shipwreck. I thought America is based on truth. I thought America has lady justice. That's fair. And blind to partiality. Or has America been hijacked 
And is America weaponized? And is America actually part of a global movement, a global program to absolutely drive this lamp and light on a hill to its knees so that big government can take over? I'm going to argue and say, yes, the op-ed I wrote that they won't publish, I found the following. You may not want to miss this. Do you know that the golden number is 4.5%? Nobody has told you this. I did deep research and deep study and by the Holy Spirit have come to the relevant revelation that when I look at Africa, migration in Africa, the migration crisis through Brexit into London, England, through the Brexit exercise of Britain ex exiting, here's what I found. When a society cross 4.5% of migration under a leadership, which means from 2020 under Joe Biden until 2024, if you cross the 4.5 number of total population being migrants who are not here to become American, to assimilate. They will become Cuban American, the Cuban lifestyle in America, the Turkish lifestyle in America. By the way, in Turkey, they behead Christians. That lifestyle. The Sudanese, the Congolese, those who formerly worked for Joseph Kabila, the president of the Congo, who had his military rape women, those who are now coming in here, bringing those values into America. When that society has, crosses 4.5%, you lose that culture. Do you know what happened in South Africa when that happened? They changed the national anthem, the flag, they toppled statues, they removed history from the books, they rewrote history, and the country is in such a mess that the president of South Africa said, we are imploding, the whole country is going to go dark without energy next month. You will lose your society. But what if that was the plan? What if the plan is, in fact, to break America as we know her? We're not at the 4.5 number yet. We're halfway there. That number, by the way, 331 million Americans argue, right? Give or take 10, 15 million here or there. Is the census accurate? But let's say for, 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 for common knowledge, 331 Amer million Americans, that's 15 million people crossing the border that do not want to be Americans. We're halfway there right now before Title 42 lifted. You see what happens when the squeaky wheel gets the grease and the absolute minority, the, the, the crazy factor, those who have an, an, a mental illness in society that want to sexually exploit children, how our country bends to them, caters to them, changes the law for them. Well, they're not pedophiles. We should have sympathy. They have rights too. They just want to have sex with kids. No, they're sick. They need help, and then they'd be kept away from children. But we're catering to them, and that population is 0.4% at best. What do you think it looks like when there's 4.5% that do not want what you want, that don't believe what you believe, that cry out reparations, that cry out you know, um, profiling? And what if 1% what if of the 4.5%, so 0, 0.0 whatever, 4, 5% are a criminal faction. Hmm? What if of the 27,000 that's being released into the country today, two were violent criminals who come here to harm Americans? And then the next 27,000 has two. Because it only took seven madmen to cause 9-11, to fly planes into buildings, whether that was orchestrated or not, it happened. Probably allowed to happen. Uh-oh. Yeah, I said it. It's also now being allowed to happen. And unfortunately, we're losing American lives. And we're not just losing lives at the border. So if you want to shut off because you live in Connecticut, um, have you seen the fentanyl rates in Connecticut? Omaha? From New Braunfels, Texas, all the way up to Anchorage, Alaska, Maine, the Dakotas, the Montanas, the flyover states, the beautiful 
true blue America. There's problems coming north. Why? It's depleted in the south. There's no food. There's no shelter. Just like first it was the northern territory of South Africa, and now it's all the way down into Cape Town. You cannot escape this. I pray to God he gives us revelation and discernment and humility to drop to our knees and repent and say, help us, please. We did this, Lord. You did not do this. God did not do this. God did not make people homeless. God does not make them steal and plunder. But they've got to eat. No, I'm not even mad yet. This is me just giving you a little bit of the passion that's inside my chest. Because I'm roaring like a lion. That lion of Judah that's going to and fro say, well, one stand in the gap and do it God's way. Well, let's do it God's way. Yes, take care of the Samaritan, but stop the bleeding. Tell him not to come. And then wake up the church. And get this nation to walk away from sexual immorality. Watch the movie Sex Nation and see what has happened in the last 75 years in this country. 80 years in this country. And how we stood by complicitly as they've robbed us of a Judeo-Christian moral compass. And we gave the pinky and gave the pinky and gave the pinky and they took the arm and they took the nation. You want to look at divorce rate? You want to look at the fatherless? This is not who this nation was created to be. This nation is supposed to be a rudder for the world. Not that we're better than them. We just uphold a higher set of values, which is the Bible. Consecrated in the Constitution. Not the Constitution in the Bible, the Word of God. Then, some men and women on a boat. Then, a Constitution, a Declaration of Independence. Some truths that are self-evident. Some rights and liberties for all. But, uh uh-oh, with your right and your liberty comes your responsibility. It's not about you or me. It's not about this is how I want you to address me and how I affirm myself. It's about what can I do for the least of these? What can I do for the widow and the orphan? What can I do for the destitute and the broken and the brokenhearted and the sick and the lonely? What can I do for this nation? How do I pay it forward? How do I pay it back? Who's talking about that? And no, not a presidential candidate that's going to run on what, look what they did to me, or another candidate that runs on, we're not them. How about we run on, thus says the Lord God Almighty. So yeah, you'd say, Yaku, you're screaming. Hey, listen, if you like the truth, subscribe. Hit the like button. I'm not mad at you. I'm just saying, come on, man. Can we look at the truth for a minute and actually come up with tangible solutions to fix it? Because we got a problem on our hands. Now the migrants are here. Now what? You got to stop the bleeding. Close the border. Close the border. Greg Abbott, close the border. You have constitutional right and the state of Texas. Joe Biden closed the border. Do you know why Joe Biden's never acknowledged that children are being sex trafficked across the border? Because the second Joe Biden, the president of America, goes and addresses the nation and say, America, I'm your president, Joe Biden. Children are being sexually exploited and trafficked across the border. The second he says that, he has to close the border. So he doesn't say it. So they tell you the border is closed. Let me show you some articles. Why don't you look at these? These statements from Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre. The border's closed. Uh, Secretary Mayorkas lying under oath. The border's closed. President Biden. The border's closed. Kamala Harris. we got no problem on the border. We're doing a great job. 
illegal migration is down. It's not down. Are you kidding me? If you want to see that whole op-ed, go to our website. We'll publish it there. It's got 40 or something hyperlinks. Am I right? 40 hyperlinks in it that will vet and verify and show you the history of this. The old, the new. So now what do you do as an American? You pray, number one. You be the good Samaritan wherever you can. And you demand. I can't overstate. Demand from every elected official you voted for. You write them. I don't care if you live in Georgia or New Jersey. Every elected official on every level of state and federal government should be pressured right now to the point where they cannot tolerate the pressure and the pressure being flood their phones, demand, threaten that you will not fund their next campaign. You will not donate because I'm telling you, you take dollars from a politician, they tap dance. You give dollars to a politician, they tap dance. Unfortunately, George Soros and the Murdochs and the Rockefellers, they give money and they make politicians dance to their tune. And that tune has destabilized America for the sake of Davos and the World Economic Forum so the big government can swoop in and tell you how much tax you can pay 60% plus, what you owe the government, how you can have property, liberty, justice for all, no First Amendment, no Second Amendment. But you owe us and we'll tell you what to eat. We Actually, we'll give you a social score and we'll decide whether you can buy a house or not. We'll decide which kids go to college. Oh, Yaku, that's far-fetched. Really? Really? Far-fetched. Why don't you go some of the European nations? Hmm? From Davos. Why don't you look at China? Not far-fetched. It's so close, you're in the middle of it. In the middle of it. But your voice matters. Your voice does count. You do have the law behind you. You do have a constitution. They haven't eradicated yet. You have the word of God. You are a son and a daughter of God. You've got a legion of angels traveling with you. He will go before you. He will be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. He will honor you when you speak the truth, even if you're the only one. I say if you're the only one speaking the truth, it's an honor because he's placed you in a community that has, is void of truth and he wants you to speak it. And you are to raise your sons and your daughters according to the ways of God. And you are to depart from sexual immorality. And you are, uh, we are to repent. Show me another way in the Bible to heal your land, please, somebody. Can you pull up that scripture for me, please, Rebecca? <clears throat> I love you. I love this nation, which is why I'm bringing you the truth. They're selling the organs of children in this country. They're killing babies on the border. They're forcing them to pay debt. We're buying American children like their furniture. Come on, America. The every NGO non-government organization that is fighting child sexual exploitation, human trafficking, sex trafficking, thank you. I, I could mention you by name, but just all of you, thank you. For our friends, our partners, thank you. Gene Alla, Jessica Munez, Traffic 911, Samaritan Women, Tim Ballard, O-U-R, and then all the others, Refuge for Women, Hundreds of them thank you every single day to pick up the broken pieces as the Good Samaritan and take in the broken to an inn. We just don't have enough inns in our country. Second Chronicles 7.14 If my people who are called by my name got a problem here. I don't have a dollar bill with me. In God we trust is on our money. 
One nation under God is a slogan. So are we not the nation that says we're God's people? You may say, well, I'm not a Christian. I mean, this nation says it is. Albeit at the same time they are worshiping the Freemasons and the Illuminati. Thank you, Dan. You may want to keep on, hold on to these because Joe's trying to get rid of these too. Trying to make your dollar digital. Not that this dollar is backed by anything. No, China backed their money by gold. Don't get me started. The United States of America, the Federal Reserve Note. On the back of this note, yes, on the left, we've got the all-seeing eye from the Freemasons, and that's diabolical. But here we go. In God we trust. Now, I can argue who's their God. But the Founding Fathers, the dude on the front of your bill, knew what in God we trust meant. It meant the God of the Bible, the creator of the universe, the one and only. They knew. We may have forgotten, but they knew. So, let's read. If my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. What happens when you seek someone's face? You seek their counsel. You look them in the eye. You humble yourself. You say, help me, please. Help me, please. Help me, please. God, help us, please. If you do that, and turn from your wicked ways. Which would mean what? Uh, don't watch porn anymore. Don't lie. Don't hide the truth. Don't deceive. Don't put yourself first. Don't call evil good and good evil. Don't change the truth. Don't abandon the word of God. Don't abandon the Bible. Don't change the Bible. Don't cherry pick the scriptures. Don't preach around the scriptures. I mean, the list is long. But all of it takes some self accountability. If you do that, then I, I, God, will hear from heaven and will forgive the sin and heal their land. I don't know about you, but I think America needs some healing. A president doesn't do that. You may think so. You may think a president can be your messiah. He cannot. She cannot. Cannot. Your messiah came already, hung on a tree, gave it all, stood up out of that grave, seated at the right hand of God, interceding in your behalf, saying, God, please have mercy on America one more time. Remember, Lord, why you created that country. Don't destroy them like you destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Don't destroy them and just save one family like Noah. Remember, remember, remember America. Interceding, Scripture says on our behalf. As we speak, alive, seated on the throne at the right hand of God. Ezekiel 33, 7 says, the watchman must warn. Well, I'm just trying to be a watchman and warning, saying, do not do this. Don't continue this way. Your family is going to feel it. You may lose your marriage. You may lose your family. If you engage in sexual immorality, if you go down that path, if you look the other way when you see evil, if you don't step in, if you don't help the Samaritan, if you don't take into an end, if you don't be accountable, if you don't stand uh, humil uh, uh, humble in front of God and seek His face and repent, you cannot escape the law of God. Now, we're not saved by the law. We're saved by grace. Our works don't save us, but we are instructed that it's impossible to please God without faith, but faith without works is dead. So what is your works? You go live it. You speak it. You speak truth. Truth that they don't want you to speak. You speak it. Because if we all speak it, 
it will be the norm. I want to thank Patriot Mobile, a Christian conservative cell phone provider that stands in this fight with us, that literally will put their money where their mouth is, that will take the dollars you pay for your cell phone service and turn it right around and fund Christian conservative initiatives, turn school boards, protect children, go to the border with us, help us rescue children, produce content with us, go to the border and feed the hungry. I can actually tell you that Patriot Mobile, I've watched them, Glenn Story and his team, Scott, Lee, Jenny, be the Good Samaritan. Consider Patriot Mobile. All the major towers are included, no matter where you come from, T-Mobile, or, or Verizon, or AT&T. Glenn Story himself told me he will buy you out of your contract. Contact Patriot Mobile. Go to patriotmobile.com, mention the bottom line, or dial 972-PATRIOT. And then, if you're serious about us saving American children from sex trafficking, and I'm talking about legitimately taking a child that's abused and redeeming that life, restoring that life, then I'm asking you to drink some coffee. Because when you drink Storyville coffee, the only coffee brand that pours into the fight against the sexual exploitation of children, when you, when you get a subscription of Storyville coffee, number one, it's the number one roaster in the, in, in the United States of Storyville coffee. Phenomenal coffee. It gets shipped in beautiful packaging to your home. Go to storyvillecoffee.com. Their slogan is love everybody. So I'm asking you to drink some coffee, Storyville coffee, and help us save the life of a child one cup at a time. I know you're drinking coffee. Starbucks is not funding the fight against child sexual exploitation. They're funding initiatives in the opposite direction. Okay? Please, I'm asking you. And, and you'll thank us because it's better coffee. It's just better coffee. But you're going to feel better as well when you drink it because you're going to know you're contributing to actually rescuing children from sex trafficking. So when we read a scripture, like God says, if you will humble yourself, if you will seek my face, I will hear your prayer from heaven and I will heal your land. What does that mean to us? It means that we have hope. We ultimately always have hope in Christ. If not, if God wasn't for us, we wouldn't be here. Think about it. Why has he not destroyed America like he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah? And please just understand the pain and the agony in the heart of a God to say, a city has so abandoned me that they can no longer be here. He hasn't done that to us. I could argue that he has sent us weather. I could argue that moments after we touched the boundaries of Israel, Katrina hit this country. I could argue that he's sending us warning signs. Why? So that we can keep hope. We are never hopeless. If you're a son, a child of God, you may just have to be reminded of who he is. He is the redeemer after all. He is the one who sacrificed his own son. Why? So you don't have to sacrifice yours. Can I remind you that he called the man of God to take his son up a mountain? And as he raised... His knife, he said, put your knife down. I'll give you a ram in the bush. That, of course, was a foretelling of Jesus coming to be our sacrifice. You do have hope. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care who is running the White House. Frankly, that person's not seated at the right hand of God, as I told you er earlier, whispering in the ear of God, hey, Yaku's your son. Hey, Rebecca's your son. Hey, that family's coming after your heart, God. Show them favor. Cover them. Send the legions of angels. Go before them. The declaration God spoken over your family, if you would only grab a hold of it, and it's generational. It's called the Abrahamic, the Mosaic Covenant, the covenant with Moses. The Abrahamic Covenant, the covenant with Abraham. The Davidic Covenant, the covenant with David. The covenant through His Son, Jesus Christ. The ultimate blood covenant. To say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Doesn't matter how dark it is. Surely if you lift your eyes up to the hills, you will walk through the valley of shadow of death. Psalm 23. Surely I have given you a way out if you're in it. God, not Yaku, says, I will not let you walk into a trial if I've not already given you a way through it. 
which means there's always hope. There's always a way out. It's never lost. Even when they say, but Goliath is big. We want to take the Philistines, but did you see how big the problem is? Did you see how gigantic the problem at the border is? It's just too big. That's why I'm saying, no, it's not. It's back into the hands of the people. Stop looking for a Messiah in the White House. You have a Messiah. His name's Jesus Christ. And the day he departed, the day he ascended, and he did ascend. And if you don't believe it, the rocks will cry out before you, and then you will see, and every knee, knee will bow. The day he ascended, he said, now go do greater work than I did. Now the Holy Spirit lives inside you. The Holy Spirit didn't live in Moses. Did not. Moses had to climb a mountain to go dwell with God. Moses came down that mountain. Eliza came down that mountain. And these boys were glowing. You don't have to do that. He lives inside you if you receive him. And if you haven't received him yet, then maybe, yes, you can be hopeless. I, I actually would say only if you do not have the Holy Spirit could you say, well, I'm hopeless because you're doing it in your own strength. And then today I'm inviting you to say, wait a minute, there is in fact another way. You don't have to do it in your own strength. We don't have to fix this border in our own strength. We don't have to fix the problem of the the broken and the lost laying on the street and how are we going to be the good Samaritan? We don't have the resources. We don't have to do that in our own strength. God will make a way. He will show us. How does God make a way? Poof like a genie? No, he's already done it. He created the way through before the problem arose. We just need to see. We don't see. You have not because you ask not. What do you ask for? What if you ask for eyes to see? What if you ask for God to move your heart, break your heart for what breaks his? What if you ask God, show me a solution in my city? What do we do with these children? What can our church do? What can my family do? What can I do in, my, in the boardroom? What can I do at my children's school? What do I say to the principal? God, how do you want me to conduct myself? What resources are there? Who do I tie hands with? Who do I lock arms with? You do have hope. You actually have more reason to hope than to not hope. And I know it doesn't feel that way because social media, oh my gosh, can I just show you what we look like, all of us? We look like this. Let me show you. We just scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll and scroll. What if we do this? What if we dig into the Word of God and pause and read and listen? And contemplate the word of God. And ask him, what's your will, Father? How do we do this? Who should I actually vote for? Who do we support? You got to go to war. I'm not, I, I, I will do this. I will, I will say there's hope, but there's hope, but you got to do something. God moves through people who move. Or he'll move through a donkey. So you should have hope. Hope for your family. Do not live in fear. Do not, when they shoot up a mall, stop going to malls. That's not what you do when your son falls off a bicycle. You put him back on the bike. Why? Because you do have hope. Because God does cover you. Make sure your family's covered. Cover them in the blood of Jesus. Pray it over your home. Declare it over your family. Declare it over this nation, over your city. And hey, could you be so bold to even have hope for Joe Biden? What if we prayed for Joe Biden? God. Have him repent. God changed his heart. God showed Jesus to him in the middle of a vision, a dream at night, like you do to the Muslims in the desert. What if we have enough hope because the one that's the hope giver we trust? What if that happens? Because I firmly believe if you hope, your hope is in the Lord. Yeah, it's in the unseen. But your hope's truly in the one who has the answers. So have hope. Please, 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 please do not make your hope an earthly hope, an earthly man. Yes, men can steward the word of God, but that's when we're at our best. My pinnacle moment of my lifetime would be if for a moment I could represent Christ accurately. That is the pinnacle. I've played sport where 80,000 people in the stadium 
I don't know how many have my name on their back jersey. It has nothing. It holds no value. None. They forgot me 45 minutes after I blew my knee out. But I tell you something. You stand in front of a prodigal. You stand in front of the the hurt and the broken as a good Samaritan and you accurately represent the heart of God, the love of Christ. And that love is just, but that love also has justice. That love does have law and order. That love does correct. If you accurately represent God, it's your pinnacle. Now the game for us is string as many of those moments together as possible, as fathers, as husbands, as leaders, etc. Keep him in the focus. Make him the focus. He's the solution. He's the answer. We have the word of God. If you haven't tried this recipe, which I promise you is the only recipe, the recipe of the love and the redemption in Christ Jesus through his blood, I'm inviting you today. What can you lose? What can you lose? Because you're already thinking you've lost the country and freedom and liberty. You, you, is it, should you not maybe try this one? For a minute. And no, it's not a quick fix where, okay, I do it and all of a sudden my addiction's gone and all of a sudden my craving's gone and all of a sudden I don't crave porn. No, you then need to go walk it out. That's the portion faith without work is dead. You have to walk it out. But you can absolutely rest assured that you can have hope that this nation is not lost. God has a plan for this nation. There is a plan for you. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but love and sound mind. And ultimately, remember, he gave his all. He gave his only son. It's more than just giving his son. He asked his son, will you go from the throne? Because he came from the throne. He didn't come from the seed in the womb. He came from the throne, became seed in the womb, became man, and then chose to humble himself in front of his father and said, I have hope that you will resurrect me. I have hope that you will see me through. I have hope that you will strengthen me. So please, have hope hope but do something with it live it out live it out loud live as if the trials of this world cannot break you because truly you're seated in the throne room at the table it cannot break you it can't give you eternal life And it can't rob you of it when you surrender to him. That, my friends, is the way forward in hope and love. But you got to walk it out. God bless you.